Why does nobody talk about the potholes here in the YouTube videos? <laughs> What's up guys? We yeah. made it! <laughs> just flew into Keflavik International Airport this morning, made our way to Reykjavik and just finished uh, shopping at the Costco and the uh, bonus store here which is what everyone recommends, it's got the best prices. Instant soups. <laughs> and we got all the camera gear and all the clothes. Oh! More SD cards. Yeah. <laughs> got a couple more 64 gigabytes at the Costco. We spent 19,500 krona at Costco which I think comes out to like 180. So we're good for the week. And then we spent a little bit more over at Bonus, and now it's time to get on the road. I guess we're underwater right now. <laughs> Are your ears popping? After one kilometer at the roundabout, take the first exit. We kind of just made our first pit stop after leaving Reykjavik. Uh, I don't know where we're at, but <laughs> we got some sweet mountains in the background. Check this out. That's pretty cool, huh? Now we need to show you guys what we're driving anyways. We haven't even shown you all the camper van. We're rocking out in the Camp Easy camper van. The thing's pretty sweet. We kind of wanted to get this out of the way actually a little sooner or maybe during the trip when we had the van out somewhere, but right before we turn it in, we're gonna show you guys a little bit about this thing and give you our impressions since we've been in it for the last 11 days and nights. It's uh, been pretty cool. We actually didn't stay at any hotels throughout our entire stay so far. Now we switched over to a rental car and are getting an Airbnb for the last three, but let's show you guys this thing inside and out. There's no cruise control, which is a bummer because the speeding tickets here are very expensive and it's easy to find yourself going a little over. Uh, they recommended the Waze app for us, that way you guys can see where the uh, cameras are. Uh, one guy told us he was going 22 kilometers over and he got almost a $500 ticket. So easy on your speed limits out here in Iceland. Uh, we got the Easy Cleaver 4x4 which came in handy because we did take this thing on the F road and down some slippery uh, roads as well and so the four wheel drive I think was a big benefit. With the van we got like a power inverter so we were able to charge all of our camera gear right there. We had like three things charging at one time. Never did we run out of juice on any of our camera gear, on the drone, on our phones, on anything like that. Everything else is standard stuff. Uh, headlights are not auto and you have to have your headlights on in Iceland at all times. Uh, there's no turning right on red and uh, you cannot, uh, what else? I think that's it. You can't turn right on red. You've probably seen enough of the outside throughout the entire video series that we've been posting, unless I end up putting this in the first video, in which case you wouldn't have, but it comes with a spare tire on the back. You're responsible for any spare tire changes. We found out about the extra cargo in the rear here on like the third day. <laughs> so we put a lot more bags and the uh, bedding and everything down here. Underneath that rear seat, the access is only from the hatch. Let's give you the, the main view inside this thing from the back. And then we'll move on to the interior. This is kind of like your, your setup in the back for lunches and things of that nature. Under every seat there is storage. So you got storage under this seat, you got storage under this seat, and now let me show you how you make the bed in this thing too. You remove the table, the rod comes out from under it as well. We usually just put the table up in the front of the cab because there was no need for it back here while we we're sleeping and everything. And then you have these bars down here under this seat, set these up. And then you take the cushions off of these two off the back. They just lift up and pull out. And this is now the bed area. And you have all your bedding in one bag, like I said, that we stored in the back. So it was never in the cabin here and taking up space like this. Uh, and we were able to put all of our clothing, our big bags of luggage and everything, underneath the bed, along with all our food. You have so much storage under these seats that you've got the spare room right here for the sink and the fridge and uh, all that to do your cooking and whatnot. You saw how quick it was to put it together, now let's tear it down real fast. Put the table back up. Nothing to it. You've got curtains all the way around on all the windows. It makes it very simple to just cover up for the night. The sink. Water. That's being sourced from right down here. There's a tank that we only had to even refill halfway like one time and it lasted us 11 days. So depending on how much water you use, we only use this for just brushing our teeth and whatnot when we didn't go into like a restroom at the campgrounds that we stayed at for brushing our teeth and everything. So 
That's this guy right here. This is the refrigerator. Cooking utensils. Cooking utensils. Bowls, pots and pans. And then you've got this little stove. And all we really did with all this stuff is boil water in the pot for our instant noodles. And that was the majority of what we were actually cooking during our trip if it wasn't just chips and salsa and things of that nature. <laughs> Easy snacks. But anyways, I just wanted to hop on here and tell you guys what we're up to and where we're headed. And we're gonna hop back in the van and get back on the road, maybe grab a bite to eat and uh, try and make it as close to Kirk Fell as we can. La Colina Pizza Restaurant. A lot of people ranting and raving on, uh, I don't think Yelp, because I don't think they have Yelp out here. And we also found out they don't have Pandora in this country, so we're streaming Fit Radio for the mixes. Dinner costs about 3,800 krona. You don't know what they're talking about. You're just like, go ahead and swipe it. What is it, like 20 bucks? I think it ended up being somewhere around 40 for a pizza and one beer, a couple waters. So, just so you know, back on the road. Starting off our second morning. I think today's gonna be a lot more snowy. <laughs> We're gonna drive up into the mountains, but we are uh, waking up to some waves hitting the cliffs over here in Arnerstapi. Uh. <laughs> hey Siri, what's the weather like? You'll need to connect to the internet first. Included as we thought, but this is really cool. Church of Fells Foss Waterfalls, first tier, got the second tier up there, and then, uh, man, got the mountain, of course. A lot of people here, just trying to get a few good shots for y'all. It's probably 30 degrees, but it's getting hot. Holy smokes, I found out the best way to carry the Ronin is upside down with your camera mounted onto it. That way it just kind of hangs there and you're not getting tired out carrying this thing up and down the hills. All right, we made it back to the camper van. I don't know if getting here any earlier makes too much of a difference because the fact of the matter is a lot of people are gonna be here, I'd say at all times while there's daylight, so you just gotta kind of wait a minute to get your turn for your good shot and uh, wait for people to get out of the background. But that is Kirk Felsfoss, pretty dope spot. We're gonna hit probably the closest cafe, grab a little cappuccino or something, and then get back on the road. We think we found a coffee shop, but we're not sure. It's got a little teacup on there. We're gonna give this thing a shot. the coffee shop man that was awesome we met a local here she was real cool she gave us a lot of advice and uh, we're gonna head to Akiredi it's not how you say it but it's how I'm saying it <laughs> and, uh, it's probably gonna be the <laughs> longest drive of the trip without really any sights in between so we've got like a five plus hour drive ahead of us what was it looking like yeah about five six depending on how the roads are a patch that looks like it could be icy through a town that I can't really pronounce so we'll probably just head that direction I don't know if that thing's climbable, but we're about to find out. I just saw this off the beaten path. We're about to run up this thing. We're almost to the top. Oh, we're sinking. Woohoo! Okay. I don't know what the safest way to get down is now. Oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> we made it. Alright, put that on the bucket list, y'all. Gotta climb up the black gravel mini mountain off of whatever highway this is out in Iceland. Another pit stop. I feel like it's just too easy to miss all this stuff. You gotta pull off the side of the road a lot. And we saw this little canyon looking deal. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff off this Highway 54. We just keep seeing thing after thing. Uh, there's this boat way out here. Uh, and I want to see how close I can get the drone to it maybe. It looks like it's just kind of beached and it's not. Yeah, it's definitely just like up on the sand. This is funny. Mm -hmm. 
The drone made it like all the way out there, but I got worried as I ended up losing the signal. The screen went black and I was thinking to myself, oh dude, we might have lost the drones. I hit the home button and it ended up working out. Got the Fly More combo with the Mavic. I feel like it's a must. If you guys are interested in the drone, there's so many opportunities to get awesome shots with them out here in Iceland. Uh, I'll link ours down in the description below with the extra batteries and whatnot so you got an opportunity to check these things out for yourself. We found a new waterfall, Tiny Foss. We've entered off the Ring Road Highway 1 for a minute and we're on Road 711 and there's this lake, a Vester Hopsvatten. There's a cool reflection of the mountains. I'm gonna hop out and let you guys take a look at this. Pretty sweet, huh? Holy cow. Glad we made it out to this one. The hike down is a little sketchy, but uh, wait till you see the video down here. That about wraps up the rock. Glad we made the trip out here. Now time for the long drive to Akureyri. Should take another two hours or so. Yeah. I would love an apple. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right guys, thank you for watching. That was the first two days of our two week trip in Iceland and the last little bits of us driving was just to a campground. I think it was called Hamar. I'm gonna put everything down in the description for you guys because the video is more vlog style. We're gonna do a big informational video at the end of all the vlogs once we've got all those put out about our complete itinerary, the cost of the trip, and also all the gear that we use to film. We're gonna have that linked in the description. I know I didn't get the pronunciations too correct. <laughs> I know I was saying Kirk Jufel instead of Kirk Jufel, and I didn't know Akure and I didn't know uh, Snifelsness. I do get better at the pronunciation as the trip goes on. <laughs> it's a little tricky when you first get there. Yeah guys, we had an absolute blast and I can't wait for you to see the next videos in the series. It's gonna be a ton of fun, so stick around, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and hit the notifications bell, that way you actually get notified when the new videos drop, and we will catch you on the next video. <gasps>